very much. Um, I'm sorry I didn't understand everything that uh, was said already, but uh, mm, I understood that Nikolai was talking about uh, innovation and was talking about the clean energy package. So, so I think I get the context. Um, so I would like to, <coughs> first of all, thank very much uh, Nagumonomics uh, for uh, inviting me for this excellent place and it's absolutely fantastic uh, uh, room. I, um, I will get very distracted all the time because of this beautiful place. And so <coughs> I'd also like for saying a few words about the um, energy, energy in Europe and our region and the presidency. I uh, would like to pay tribute to uh, Constantinescu, a uh, good friend, um, great energy diplomat uh, who passed away recently. He was a diplomat with uh, high intelligence, skills and vision. There are many diplomats who are very intelligent and very skillful, but there are not many diplomats with the vision. And I think we need energy diplomacy with vision. Because energy, the energy world is changing dramatically. And um, we find it very, we will find it very difficult to catch up with this change. Because it's not just a technological change. It's also the dramatic change in the energy economics. We are used to running energy politics in a certain way. But in the last four or five years probably, the energy economics has turned upside down. Everything that was cheap in the past became expensive. Everything that was expensive in the past became cheap. Things that were centralized in the energy system became the central, are becoming the centralized. Things that were centralized are becoming centralized. And this is a very rapid change. And of course, the economic theory, economic practice can't catch up. And of course, if the economics can't catch up, the administration and politics are lagging behind, behind, behind. And it's not just in Bulgaria and Romania, it's in everywhere in Europe and uh, probably in some pockets in Europe and in some pockets in certainly very big pockets in China and in America and some other places things are going forward but everything is changing very very fast. To give you a couple of examples, a few years ago nuclear energy and coal energy was the cheap energy. Solar and wind was the expensive energy. Now nuclear is becoming prohibitively expensive which is a problem because we would have needed it for the uh, reaching the 2050 targets. Um, coal energy, when everybody is saying, well, it's very cheap, is becoming also very expensive. The very expensive wind and solar energy is becoming the cheapest one. So what are we doing with that? That would be very complex and uh, difficult thing. So and in that context, we are moving also the whole European project very fast. And I have to say, I'm very jealous about the approaching Romanian presidency. I was quite closely involved with the Bulgarian presidency um, a few months ago. Um, apart from various other things, I'm uh, the so-called goodwill ambassador for Bulgarian energy policy, uh, which I tend to hide because the day when I was appointed to be goodwill ambassador, Mugabe was appointed to be goodwill ambassador for human rights. So I sort of said that I will never, never, ever say that I'm goodwill ambassador of anything. Unfortunately, he's, uh, he was withdrawn from that position, so I, I, in, in a very shy way I would mention that. But the Bulgarian presidency was a very busy presidency with a lot of administrative stuff and all the files and negotiations and all that. We somehow managed. We didn't. The main thing about Bulgaria, I don't know about Romania, is not to fail in front of the foreigners. I mean, that's, that's the driving force of our, our, our life. So we didn't fail in front of the foreigners, we did fine. But the Romanian presidency will not be so busy with negotiating files, but it will be 
probably the most luxurious presidency that, that Europe has ever seen. I mean, you have all the fantastic strategic stories to be, to preside over. Obviously starting with Brexit, which is a very sad story, but to be the president while Brexit is happening is incredibly exciting. The second thing that I think could be very, very interesting is the negotiations about the uh, 2050 strategy. This is a very interesting document because finally the European Union, the European Commission, switched on and realized that the low carbon economy is not just some kind of a burden or responsibility to the future and all these beautiful things that people don't care much about. But it's actually about competitiveness, about competition, about prosperity. And they managed to produce a document that is focused on the development of, of um, the European economy. And, and that will be very interesting to negotiate. And of course, the linked with that is the negotiations around the next European budget, which is again a very interesting document because the European budget now will have increased to at least 25% climate related spending, an increase of 60% of uh, research and development. Again, this is European awakening because we suddenly realize that China, which we always think, well, I mean, these are our manufacturers. I mean, we're the clever guys, we think about various things invent them, then we send them to these guys there to produce them. So guess what? China has now higher spending on research and development than Europe. And suddenly Europe is saying, oh, wow, hang on a second, what's happening? Well, what's happening is that every, they bought all the technologies, everything that they didn't manage to buy, they stole, or the other way around, rather. They stole everything, <laughs> whatever they didn't stole, they bought. And, and now they're running, running ahead as leaders in wind energy, solar energy, electric vehicles, electric buses, the super grids, uh, HV, I mean, everything that we can possibly imagine, probably still lagging behind a little bit in the, in the hydrogen and the offshore wind sector, but they will, uh, at the moment there is something big they'll buy. Uh, so we have to compete with that. And then there is the other, a uh, fantastic story that you will deal with, and again, I, I have to say I'm quite jealous, is uh, your CBU forum uh, on the future of Europe. I mean, future of Europe is not about talking philosophy and how Europe appeared in this world and how wonderful Europe is and so, all that. It's a very, very specific thing, how to mend the divides in Europe, how to deal with Russia. Um, Russia knows how to deal with us, but we don't know how to deal with Russia, and that's a very, very important thing. And of course, again, how to deal with China. I mean, what do, do we do? Are we taking some Trumpian uh, posture and saying, we'll raise barriers and we'll do this and that, or we'll invest more in research and development and more in cooperation, and uh, this will be a very, very interesting thing. And of course, um, all this global and very important thing, I think there will be another event that very few people will notice, but in my view is very important. This is the, um, the CSEC meeting, the Southeast Europe uh, uh, Energy Connectivity Group of the 17 energy ministers. Uh, probably nobody knows that there are 17 countries in Southeast Europe, but there are apparently. Ukraine is one of them. Uh, strangely enough. But this is a very, very important thing. I hope we'll discuss it later. Uh, the fantastic place that the energy uh, cooperation in Southeast Europe can, um, can, can play. So, and I think all these uh, stories uh, raise the question, okay, what, what are we doing? And that, that's my impression and my experience from the Bulgarian presidency. Are we here to present, to do the best possible job and to then not to be shouted at and say, well, Bulgarians and Romanians, and then what can you expect from them? Uh, which was the starting point of the Bulgarian presidency, by the way. Uh, 
I remember when Claude Turmeck, who was responsible for the um, governance files, told me once, well, look, I mean, if you did do everything well, very well, they will say, well, that's your job. Uh, if you fail in something, they will say, well, Bulgarians, what do you expect from them? So, and that was quite a serious driving force. But is there something more that can be done? And I think there is, because the Southeast Europe region has some exceptional qualities and assets that can be put into this global competition for which the 2050 strategy is talking about. So one of them, of course, is the exceptional renewable potential of the region. And in Bulgaria, Romania, Greece, and all the countries in the region has, as a whole, the best cost-competitive potential. Cost-competitive, that means cheaper than gas. Cost-competitive potential in the entire Europe. But of course, for us, the question is, okay, why should we develop it? Is there some benefit for us? So that's a very important thing to negotiate with the European Union. Okay, if we can contribute more than, than our share, how can we benefit? Can we sell statistically or physically renewable energy to Germany? Uh, can we attract uh, special uh, condition um, uh, investments in Bulgaria, in Romania, in, in the whole region? What can we do? And, and I think that negotiation should be established on a, on a quite a tough basis because we have a very strong position there. And the other thing, of course, again, you, you might decide that I'm a bit obsessed with China, but uh, this competition with China is a very serious thing. And Southeast Europe has a fantastic opportunity to bring back the big industries that are in the new sectors, in the low carbon world. And these are, I mentioned, the, the electric vehicles. Uh, recently, the Sofia mayor canceled a big uh, order of diesel buses and said they would buy electric buses because the air is very dirty in Sofia. And where did she buy the electric buses? She bought them from China. Why from China? Because, I mean, that's where the electric buses are produced. So why electric buses are produced in China? Why are they not produced in Bulgaria? Why electric cars are produced in China? They are not produced in Romania. And the combination between very high technical skills, knowledge, uh, experience of our countries, the low cost, the low labor cost, the proximity to the European market, and the fact that we are inside the European Union, positions us in an absolutely fantastic place to be the leaders in the um, low carbon technology manufacturers. And this is something for which the European Commission has to contribute and pay. When they want to develop hydrogen industry, then we can say, well, we can develop the biggest hydrogen uh, pilot installation, but you have uh, innovation funds and this innovation fund should not go always to Denmark and Germany and France because they are the innovators. They should come to Romania, they should come to Bulgaria because this is where the innovation that we need for the competition can drive the economy of this part of the world forward. I mean, I think that might sound like a fantasy, but I truly believe that we're in a very, very strong position and this is something that we can work together, we can stick together in uh, these goals and, um, and not only look for our benefits of, in these negotiations, but look for the common good. Achieving the climate neutrality in 2050, but doing it in such a way that it can drive the competitiveness of the European economy and our national economies forward. Well, thank you very much again for this fantastic opportunity, and I'm looking forward to after driving five hours from Sofia after my plane was cancelled. I'm really looking for a glass of Romanian wine. Thank you very much. Thank you.